Not so long ago, dentistry focused on controlling rampant caries, but without a scientific knowledge of the disease or on any scientific rationale. Caries is a disease process in a patient's mouth. It manifests itself on individual teeth, and thus the diagnosis of caries is not only for the part of the teeth affected, but involves the whole person. Modern restorative dentistry has adopted a medical treatment model that provides the clinician with adequate information for proper assessment and decision making in the treatment of dental disease. This model allows clinicians to individualize and to evaluate all components of the process for a proper treatment strategy. It also educates and involves a patient in treatment decisions which results in acceptance of appropriate preventive and restorative strategies in caries management and for improved compliance and oral health. Detection, diagnosis, and treatment planning become components of a comprehensive treatment strategy. Keys to treatment now include identifying and assessing a patient's risk factors for dental disease while applying one's understanding to properly diagnose and treat the patient. Factors to consider for management of a disease process include the patient's age, oral hygiene habits and status, salivary and microbiological conditions, dietary habits, fluoride exposure, behavioral conditions, prior dental treatment, and family history. Controlling and preventing risk-related disorders in the oral cavity can begin with counseling the patient and family members about the etiology of the disease process and then managing the risk factors using specific treatment recommendations including behavioral, chemical, and minimal invasive procedures. The modern restorative concept seeks to minimize the biologic cost of the natural tooth as a whole by adopting a minimal intervention philosophy that combines three components of the puzzle, which are identify and detect, prevention, and restore using minimal intervention for the replacement of natural tooth structure and or restorations. Identify and detect caries. Caries detection involves data collection, classification of the lesion, and lesion assessment. This detection process should include a history of the past caries experience, an evaluation of dietary habits, and a salivary assessment. Saliva assessment. The saliva assessment includes measuring the flow rate, consistency, pH, and buffering capacity. When the pH value drops to 5.5 or lower, demineralization begins. Healthy saliva can neutralize acids produced by dental plaque, restoring the pH to neutral, and this promotes remineralization of the demineralized enamel surface. This process occurs many times each day, especially after food intake. The Saliva Check Buffer Kit is an examination tool for identifying, measuring, and assessing the patient's possible caries risk based upon hydration, salivary consistency, resting saliva pH, stimulated saliva flow, stimulated saliva pH, and saliva buffering. Stimulated salivary flow can be measured by chewing a piece of inert paraffin wax for a period of 10 seconds and 5 minutes. The pH strip will indicate the level of acidity. Highly acidic saliva will appear in the critical red section, 5.0 to 5.8. Moderately acidic saliva will appear in the yellow section, 6.0 to 6.6, .6, and healthy saliva will appear in the green section, 6.8 to 7.8. The buffer test indicates the ability of the saliva to buffer or minimize an acid challenge. Red, from 0 to 5, indicates a very low buffering ability for the saliva. Yellow, from 6 to 9, indicates a low buffering ability for the saliva. Green from 10 to 12 indicates a normal to high buffering ability for the saliva. The Saliva Check Buffer Kit can provide valuable information to the clinician and patient on whether the lesion is in the process of remineralizing or demineralizing. It educates and stimulates the patient to strive for oral balance and improved oral health. Preventative Strategies after identifying the etiology of caries, 
Controlling and preventing the progression of heart tissue destruction begins with altering the caries balance. Oral health maintenance can provide protective strategies to combat the pathologic factors such as poor oral health, inadequate dietary habits, and acidic slava. Preventative protective strategies can include dietary instructions, antibacterials, adequate slava, administration of xylitol, oral hygiene techniques for improved plaque control, and the use of remineralization agents such as fluoride and calcium phosphate supplements. These preventative protective strategies can aid in the remineralization process and or prevent the process of demineralization of tooth structure. Oral Health Maintenance Oral health maintenance begins with plaque management and supportive periodontal health by allowing the patient to perform brushing techniques under supervision. An application of a pea-sized amount of MI Paste Plus with Recalcident, CPP, ACPF by GC America, can provide not only protection to the teeth, but can neutralize the acid challenges from acidogenic bacteria and plaque and from internal and external acid sources. This tooth cream should be rubbed onto the teeth with a dry finger and left on the teeth a minimum of three minutes. The longer the CPP, ACPF, and Slava are maintained in the mouth, the more effective the result. Restore In the past, Extension for Prevention utilized restorative materials and cavity preparation designs in an attempt to arrest the caries process. These ideas were based upon removal of caries and the mechanical properties of the filling material in use to treat them. At the time, neither the fluoride ion or the process of remineralization was known. In the new era of prevention from extension, many of the old limitations are no longer applicable because of the advances in research and technology. Research is being directed towards restorative materials that are bioactive and capable of arresting and eliminating the carious lesion. A new preservation-based approach has synthesized from this evolution. With modern assessment and management, the clinician can limit the size of the preparation retaining areas of demineralized dentin and enamel which can be allowed to heal through remineralization. This medical model for decision making in the treatment of dental disease also educates and involves the patient in treatment decisions. This results in acceptance of appropriate preventive and restorative strategies in caries management with improved compliance and oral health. The quote by G.V. Black to his students, the day is coming when we will be engaged in practicing preventive rather than reparative dentistry has come true. Restorative material selection and shade selection. Restorative material selection is a preoperative consideration which should be performed in the diagnosis and treatment planning phase prior to restorative treatment. From the data collection, it was determined that this patient was caries active and at moderate risk level because of his poor oral hygiene and dietary habits. A bioactive self-adhesive glass ionomer system, Equia, was selected for its preventive and therapeutic modality. Various shade modification lights may be useful in detecting small variations in U and intensity of color, such as the right light shade matching light by Addent Incorporated. I use the camera to isolate and reduce the influence of surrounding colors. The focus field of view removes these distractions for a more accurate shade determination. After administrating anesthesia, the tooth was isolated with a dental dam. Although this restorative material does not require dental dam isolation, I prefer to use the dam to achieve optimal field control during the procedure. An extensive curious lesion was evaluated clinically and radiographically on the maxillary left first molar which represents the level of caries activity. Radiographic review indicates the extent of the caries lesion on the first molar. The diagnodent by CABO was used to monitor and assess the caries. Notice the number surrounding the existing composite is high compared to the low number of seven obtained on the distal groove. The pre-existing composite resin was removed with a black banded composite removal burr, a number 5985 by Brassler, using water spray. The carious dentin is removed using a number four slow speed round burr. 
Infected carious dentin is removed and no further removal of tooth substance is required. A spoon excavator, an EXC2 by Brassler, is used to complete the process. Only slight undermined enamel rods are removed and the cavity walls were smoothed with a 30 micron DET9 diamond burr by Brassler. The preparation design is controlled by the extent of the carious lesion with respect for maximum tissue preservation. This procedural step, tooth conditioning, is optional. If utilized, the GC cavity conditioner, a 10% polyacrylic acid, removes the smear layer and any contaminants while also providing additional micromechanical retention. The cavity conditioner is applied to the bonding surfaces using an applicator tip and allowed to dwell for 10 seconds and thoroughly rinsed with water and lightly air dried. It is important not to desiccate the dentin surface. It should appear moist with a glistening surface. A glass ionomer Fuji 9 GP Extra was selected for this restorative treatment. This system has eight shades. This wide variety of shades can provide an optimal color integration with tooth structure. Before activation, shake the glass ionomer capsule or tap its side on a hard surface to loosen the powder. To activate the capsule, push the plunger until it is flush within the main body. Immediately, place the capsule into a metal GC capsule applier and click the lever once. The capsule is now activated. The capsule should be activated just before mixing and used immediately. Immediately remove the capsule and set it into the high speed mixer and mix for 10 seconds. Auto mixing can provide a consistent, smooth mix with less voids than hand mixing while eliminating the potential for contamination. Immediately remove the mixed capsule from the mixer and load it into the GC applier. Make two clicks to prime the capsule and quickly deliver the applier to the mouth. The working time is 1 minute and 15 seconds from beginning of the mix. Place the Fuji 9 GP Extra capsule applicator tip to the base of the preparation and slowly extrude the material to the occlusal surface while removing the tip slowly. This technique prevents incorporation of voids. The material is condensed and the anatomical contours are developed using a curved instrument, a TINL-R by Brassner, to quickly and easily contour the occlusal planes. Next, a pyramidal shaped instrument, the Peter K. Thomas by Brassler, can be used to establish optimal anatomical contours. In three and one half minutes with the completion of the cement set, the occlusal contours in the restorative interface are refined with an eight micron tapered diamond burr under a water spray. The restorative interface is inspected with an 1112 Explorer to ensure marginal integrity. After finishing, Rinse with water and scrub with an applicator brush to remove any surface particles or contaminants and thoroughly air dry with a warm air tooth dryer by ADEC. A thin layer of self-adhesive G-Coat Plus by GC America is applied to all exposed glass ionomer surfaces and to adjacent tooth surfaces including the distolingual fissure with a sable brush or a micro tip applicator and light cured for 20 seconds. The completed restoration. Notice the harmonious integration of this improved glass ionomer system with tooth structure. The proximal contacts are inspected for any residual resin coating using unwaxed floss. The dental dam is removed and the patient is placed in an upright position and the teeth are air dried. And the patient is asked to perform closure without force and then centric occlusion is performed and inspected for any prematurities. Next, the patient is asked to perform lateral and protrusive excursions and the restoration is inspected for prematurities. The completed bioactive restoration which is capable of arresting and eliminating the carious process. 
Advances in material science and technology have provided the 21st century clinician with the knowledge to transform the mechanical approach of operative dentistry into a biological philosophy, strategy, and design. In the past two years, there have been numerous studies ongoing in Europe to evaluate the clinical efficiency of Equia. And the initial evidence show very promising results. Although the long-term benefits of this self-adhesive system remain to be determined through long-term clinical studies, the recent findings suggest a promising future.